Uh, welcome back to Nomad PDU for a pre-Christmas refresher on a number of topics. The first one being, one of the most important being charging the Nomad. So charging the Nomad when you're fully off-grid, charging the Nomad when you're at home, and charging the Nomad when you're on the go. So the simplest way to charge the Nomad obviously is from the ACDC. You can fully charge it before you go out, um, get your fridge running and all the rest of it before you start drawing down on the Nomad. So your ACDC charger that comes with it will charge the unit up between 12.4 and 12.6, you can see the screen go up higher than 12.6 sometimes, but it's still going to be 12.6 at the output. There can be a little bit of calibration discretion between the screen, um, at like a 0.03, things like that. So when you're charging the unit, one of the key things to remember, we still get questions about this. So the green lights on the Nomad, isn't it charging? Well, you can see here on the charger, the charger's plugged in and the light is green. That means it's not charging. So when you put the charger in, let's just plug her in here, so, and you can see the red lights on the charger now. So it's quite happily charging, and you can see that the red lights come on. So the next question we'll get is, well, how come the red light goes off when my fridge is plugged in? Okay, we've been over this a number of times, but just simply what it means is, if your fridge is running, and there's less charge going into the Nomad than being drawn out, then the light will go off. It doesn't mean it's not charging, it just means that there's more current going out than going in, so the red light won't come on. So sometimes you'll see the red light go on and off. That's because your fridge is not at temperature. And it's cutting in and out to the compressor. Okay, and we'll talk a bit more about that in another uh, tutorial shortly. So that's charging the Nomad from the AC-DC. So when you're on the go, you can, if you don't have the capacity to charge the DC-DC options, we'll talk about that in a second, you have seen us use a pocket inverter. Now, this is not a permanent uh, fix or a permanent charge uh, solution, but you can use a pocket inverter. These are modified wave. Uh, so they're a dirtier power than the pure sign. So modified wave typically for power tools and things like that is okay. Uh, pure sign is going to use for something like um, your laptop and, and something like TV, for example, which needs a better a quality power. So you can use these as a temporary solution. I wouldn't use them for 12 months you know, at full time. But you can plug this into your vehicle. <clears throat> then take your 240 uh, ACDC, plug it into that, and then you can charge the Nomad because it sees 240 here. So this will run. And this is an 8 amp charger, so that'll work fine, but not long term. You have to remember there's a little fan inside here, so it has a moving part. Um, so if you're going to hit it, you know, 8 hours or 10 hours a day on charge, then it's going to probably fail uh, eventually anyway. So that's just using the inverter. Great to have anyway for, for charging your power tools and so on, but use it in your vehicle um, to get out of, uh, out of trouble if you need to charge it from the, um, uh, from the uh, pocket inverter or an AC, DC, and you don't have access. So the best way to charge is when you're on the go is by a DC-DC. Um, then we've got solar on top, but let's talk about that in a minute. So a DC-DC charger. The DC-DC charger typically takes a charge from a source. So we'll call what's supplying power as a source. It supplies it to one of these, which is like a DC-DC module. That's a 20 amp. So DC-DC module or DC-DC unit. Um, and then it will actually stabilize it or it will make it like a, a, a constant charge. So these are all 12.6 charge DCs, so it'll take a current between 9 and 32 volt and it'll convert it to 12.6. So single DCs we would have seen before, so these ones are quite simply, you can grab it and go. So a dual battery system simply takes your dual battery, put it in the car, you connect it up through a series of relays, etc., and a, v, a VSR and to your crank, and then you've got a dual. So the grab and go series has been very popular because quite simply, if you want a dual battery, but you don't want to have to worry about setting up your vehicle, you don't want to have to worry about the smart alternator and all those other things. You can just basically plug one of these into your cigar socket and then you can plug this into your Nomad, like so, and it will charge 12.6. This is a 5 amp. The 10 amps look the same size. Plug into the cigar socket and away you go. So that is a 5 and a 10 plugs into your cigar socket. The other range of DCs that we do have is a 10 and a 20 amp Anderson to Anderson and SIGA DC uh, sort of conversion. So basically it's got an Anderson one end, so you've got Anderson in. And always remember, on a DC, it's quite simple on the back. It'll tell you the input, it'll tell you the output. Input means the, the charge of the current coming in. So you say, well, what's gonna, where's the source coming from? So is it coming from the battery or is it coming from the car? Well, that's gonna be your input. And then your output means, okay, what are you connecting this to to provide power to? So we're gonna be charging, say, from the car to the Nomad. So we're simply gonna say, well, that's the, the long one's input plug that into the car, so a lot of four-wheel drives will have a, an Anderson in the back, so this is double-fused, plug it into the Anderson in the back of the car, it's got a double-fuse on it, 
and then you plug that into your Nomad. Okay, it's now got a regulated charge of either a 10 or a 20. They both come in 10s and 20s, and away you go. So the DC-DCs that we have here, you'll see that on 5s, 10s, the 10s and 20s, and Anderson to uh, DC to Anderson. So they're just basically different types of connections that you can get. So the Andersons are, are by far a nice, a much better connection than using a SIGA. But the SIGAs are just great because you might be changing vehicles and you might be jumping from one car to another and you don't want to be stuck with the same vehicle, which is the whole, I guess, the, the benefit of the Nomad is it's just so light, easy to move around. Why would you lock it in the car when you can borrow it to your friends and things like that? On charging the Nomad, again, be careful if you're borrowing this to your friends because the biggest issue with charging that we're getting is that people are direct charging from a vehicle. Okay, You never charge one of these directly from a vehicle. <clears throat> and the reason being it's unregulated. It's pitch and troughs of power, um, and then what will happen is you'll end up damaging the BMS at best, um, and worse is you'll break down one of the series in the, in the battery pack and we may not be able to recover it. And that's not cover warranty because it's simply not using the unit as it's supposed to. So you connect this, it must have a connection to regulated. So regulated charge, okay, means that you have a regulator uh, between the source of power, what's charging, and the unit. So that, for all intents and purposes, is a regulator. Regulating up to 12.6 and 5, 10 or 20 amp charge. So that's a regulated charge. You do have a solar panel and that, again, you just have to simply ask, is the solar panel regulated? Does the solar panel have a regulator on it at the moment? So it doesn't have its own regulator? Yes, it does. Okay, it's regulated. You plug it into the regulated input. If your solar panel does not have a regulator, so it's just a panel, okay, you can connect to the red and black poles which will then go inside to the regulator, which is an internal MPVT, and then that will do the, the, um, the, the stabilizing for it to charge the battery. But make sure that the, the panel is not rated any more than 10 amp. A rule of thumb is typically under 200 watt is generally okay, but do check the panel. The onus is on you to check the panel spec. So regulated means it has a regulator on it. You can plug it into the regulated input. If it's an unregulated panel, you can plug it into the red and black poles. Now, what you don't want to be doing is running a solar panel and your regulated input all at the same time, okay? Because the maximum charge rate of this is 25 amp. It's not 25 and a bit, it's not 26, it's 25 or under. If you go over 25, it will overcharge and you'll have to have it reset, which means you have to draw more than one amp out of the unit to have it reset. There is a reset, how to reset the Nomad um, YouTube tutorial. Just if you search that there uh, under our channel, you'll find it. But the fact is that relays and things like that sometimes don't cut over. So some people will give these to the auto electrician and allow the auto electrician to do what they want with it. Now you've got to remember that not auto electricians are familiar with the product and they're not familiar with the limitations. And it's not something that they've been using for the last two decades. So they need to have information and the instructions before they start even looking at installing it. So if they have a relay, it might say, well, the car's running, it's going to charge by the regulated input because I've got a DC. When the car's off, it's going to switch to solar. There are some sometimes delays. There are a number of issues with different relays. And what will happen is they will be charging by regulated and unregulated, which means you could be putting in 10 there and 25, that's 35. Okay, it's going to continue going. It's going to overcharge, reset, overcharge, reset. If you've got a fridge attached, because it's going to keep resetting because of the draw, it's going to eventually break down, okay, and you're going to damage the unit. Like I said, uh, best case scenario, you'll end up destroying the BMS. Worst case is you'll break down one of the series in the, in the unit. So the onus is on you to understand, it's very simple. Rule of thumb is don't charge by solar and by the uh, regulated at the same time. It's simple as that. Or you can get yourself uh, on the market. There are uh, DCs that have a built-in solar controller that will do it all for you and never let any more than, say, 20 amp out. So you can look for one of those as well. But if you're going to get fancy with all the different relays and dual installs, etc., you must be aware that sometimes relay setups don't work and they put too much current through to the unit. So the rule of thumb is simply just charge it by regulated or charge it by the unregulated. It's not that difficult, especially if you're charging by 20 amp to a, from the car when you're driving. You don't need the solar panel running as well when it's a 100 amp hour unit. So again, when you're charging the unit, make sure you read the instructions. Be careful about borrowing the unit to your friends. That is the number one issue where the unit will have a problem. It's because they'll connect it directly to the alternator. They'll think it's an AGM lead acid or gel, but it's a battery. They'll connect it directly to another crank battery and think it'll charge. It will take charge for a period, but you will destroy the battery because there's no DC between it. So you never charge these without a regulator between the source 
and the actual unit. So that's that's charging the Nomad using the DC, uh, DC, DC, so the Sega DC and the Anderson style. You've got your AC, DC, which is from your 240, the charging unit before you go out. And then obviously solars, you're gonna be using quite a lot. But remember, as I said, no more than 25 amp at any given time on the regulated, maximum 10 amp on the unregulated. Don't run both at the same time. You will damage the unit, you will overcharge it. Okay, so either run one or the other uh, is the simplest way not to ever have an issue. Um, and again, if you want to use the, um, the DC DCs, we're gonna cover that off in a moment about how to use them for your fridges and also about fridge limitations. So we're gonna cover that off now. But that's a refresher on just when you pull the Nomad out, you're not sure again about the charging, uh, about your charging options, but there you charge your options. Get yourself a DC DC of some sort. Make sure it's less than 20 amp uh, or 25, nothing over. Be careful of a lot of the uh, 25 amp DCs out there. It says 25, but they will charge at 26. They'll charge at 25 and a half. When the battery's flat, it'll trip it out because it's gonna overcharge. So it has to be less than 25. So the safe bet is get yourself a 20 amp. The ones we run the biggest are 20s. Get yourself 20 of another another uh, you know, another brand is fine, um, but just make sure it's no more than 20 amp. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Have a good Christmas, and uh, we'll talk again soon.